Greetings gamers, I'm Anto and today I'm going to be showing you how to make more realistic looking fantasy maps. This series will take you from a basic concept outline all the way through to a finished print ready piece. And I'll also be showing you how to use the features of a map to enhance your world building and your storytelling. For this series we're going to be focusing on the Empire of Sengal which is based on medieval Japan and China and is one of the regions in my ongoing homebrew D&D campaign. I'm going to be using Wonderdraft for this series as it's the software I'm most comfortable with but the tips and techniques and practices that I'm going to be showing you in this series will apply to any map making software or if you're drawing your maps by hand. In this first episode we're going to be talking about how to generate your landmass, how to refine your coastline details, how to use plate tectonics and how to place your mountain ranges. If you're new here don't forget to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the latest episodes but for now let's dive straight into it. The first thing that we need to do is start and get our landmass. There are many different ways that you could do this. You could hand draw your landmass, you could use an online generator such as Asgard's Fantasy Map Maker, you could use Wender Draft's inbuilt land generation and there are many other options that you can go with. Whatever you choose, the goal here is to just end up with a basic outline of an island or a continent or just a map region that you're happy with and that we can start working on. I already have a world map for my D&D campaign. It's really rough and basic in terms of its presentation, but it's got all the landmass shapes there. So I went and I grabbed this, imported it into Wonderdraft, and then used Wonderdraft's Create Detail Map feature to zoom in on Sengal. If you don't already have a world map and you don't know where to start, I really recommend using Azega's Fantasy Map Maker because it generates really interesting looking maps that you can use as your starting point. But with our map imported into Wonder Draft and a new canvas made with it, it was time to start refining those coastlines. A lot of bad fantasy maps, a lot of the really obviously standout ones that look like they are digitally made, that don't look natural, they look that way because they have really rounded coastlines. Programs like Incarnate in particular have had this problem in the past where the brush tools are just really rounded and it's hard to get that detailed jagged look on the coastline. So the first thing that we want to do is take our basic shape and we want to tidy up those coastlines. We want to make them look much more natural. If you're doing this in Wonder Draft, you can use the raise or lower landmass tool and up the roughness a little bit just to get some randomization in there and make things look a little more natural. But if you're creating your map by hand, I recommend you take a photocopy of it and then grab a sheet of paper, put it over your photocopy or on the photocopy itself. Just start tracing in some of the refined coastlines. This way you don't lose the original and if you mess up or you want to try something really out there you can do that without having to worry about losing the work you've already done and if you're doing this by hand that is something i really recommend take multiple copies throughout the process every time you reach a new stage so that you can experiment and you can try things without worrying about losing hours and hours of work. Once our coastlines are finished, it's time to start working on mountains. Now you can place your mountains down however you'd like. You can just start going in placing mountains based on what looks good to your eye. But if you want something that looks much more realistic, I'm a big fan of using plate tectonics. Now plate tectonics is a really in-depth subject and no one would expect you to be able to learn everything that there is to know about it just to make some maps for DD or for your book or whatever it is that you're doing but understanding some of the basics and the fundamentals are going to go a long way in helping you make better looking maps in the most basic terms the entire world is divided into a series of plates of rock these are the tectonic plates and they move and interact with one another and the way in which they interact has a massive impact on natural formations and we can represent that in our maps. For example, when two plates come together, often one of them will rise above the other and that will form a mountain range. This is really useful if you have a world map like I did, because you can decide on your tectonic plates, overlay them over your world map, and then a lot of the hard work for where to place significant mountain ranges, how islands are formed, and a bunch of other details are almost done for you because of the tectonic plates. 
If instead you just want to focus on a smaller region, such as Sengal, you don't need to worry. You can still use the tectonic plates, you just don't have to know how the entire world is interacting. You can just draw on some tectonic plates and then look at how they interact and use that to inform your map. So you can see here on my world map, you can see that there's these plates that run over Sengal. So I copied their general placement into my Wonder Draft map, just using the mountain tool to trace them out really roughly. And then I had a basis that I could start going in and making my major mountain ranges from. One thing that you can see here is that in the early version, I have a fairly close to 90 degree angle, which isn't something that's typically found in nature. I go back and fix this later on. And that's one of the key things that you wanna do when you're making more realistic fantasy maps, is be willing to go back and change things, no matter how much you might have progressed. Be willing to go back in and say, right, that doesn't look right, so I'll get rid of that whole region, or I need to tweak this area and make small iterative changes over the course of the whole process. As we go through this series and you see the footage, you'll see that multiple times I go back and I might be colouring the land at one point and go back and start adding some mountains. Or I might be working on rivers and go back and change the position of a coastline. And little things like that as I go through the process and not treating the coastline that you have straight away as gospel, not treating the mountains that you first put down as the only mountains and they have to be there be willing to change them as you go. With my ref lines for the mountains in place, the next thing to do was work on a height map. Now, if you follow me on social media or are a member of the Icarus Discord, you might have already seen the ridiculous looking map that I posted that forms my height map. But the idea here is to color the whole map in vibrant colors to represent the different elevations found on the map. If you're working by hand, here is where you will want to take another photocopy and then grab several different colored markers to go in and do this. But I was working in Wonder Draft, so I grabbed the land brush tool and got to work. I filled the entire region in with a blue tone to represent my sea level. And then I followed the points at which my tectonic plates meet with a bold red color. This represents the absolute highest point of my map and everything below that will go down in elevation until it reaches sea level or dips below sea level. This step looks ridiculous, but it is an incredibly useful step. And I honestly don't think I could make another map of any kind without using a height map and without using this step. So many of the features that we'll be adding later in this episode and in future episodes are dependent on this height map and knowing how the terrain moves, which you just don't get if you don't use something like this. At this stage, I decided that the mountains up here on the left, this sort of semi-circular area, that would be a meteor impact site. That would explain why it diverges from the plate tectonics and looks a little strange. And I also decided that where the meteor had impacted would be lower than sea level, which is gonna come in important when we start working on our waterways in the next episode. So after getting my red bands in place, I started expanding outwards using a variety of different colors in wider bands going away from the highest point and down to the lowest point. And then with my colors in place, I went back to my mountain tool and started filling in my mountain ranges. At the highest points of the map, I used larger and more dense symbols, but as it starts to go to a lower elevation, I use smaller and more sparse symbols until I eventually got to the rolling hill lands. On the right hand side of the map, you can see where two of the plates meet. I decided that there would be a volcano there thanks to all that tectonic activity. This isn't something I had planned and it's a great example of how using some of these more realistic processes can influence your map and make you choose things you wouldn't have chosen otherwise. And then once I had the major ranges in place, I grabbed some smaller symbols and went and filled in some of the highest points just to really get that dense looking mountain range. You don't want to delete your height map just yet. In fact, I'd say that you should save a copy of it or make a photocopy of it so that you can continue to reference it throughout the process of map making. Because as I said, so many of the things that you're going to be doing in the future really rely on this height map. 
So we've made the outline of our map, we've refined our coastlines, we've used some plate tectonics to inform some of our decisions such as where we place our mountains, and we've made a height map that is going to be essential for future episodes. In the next episode we're going to be tackling waterways and forests, two of the most key elements of your map. So if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss that episode when it goes live. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button because it really helps me out and tells YouTube that this video is worth showing to other people. And I'd love to hear what you think of the processes I've showed off in this video down in the comments below. But until next time, happy gaming. Thanks for watching. If you're new here and you like what you see, hit that subscribe button. I release a new RPG, tabletop and world building related content every single week. And if you enjoy what I do here and want to help the channel grow, consider supporting me on Patreon. And if you want to keep watching, I've got another couple videos over there. But until next time, happy gaming.